Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Coffee with Craig, where we talk about all things politics, firearms, firearms policy, you name it, we're talking about it right here on Coffee with Craig. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please remember to like and share this video feed so that your friends can join in the conversation as we talk about firearms, firearms policy, you name it. Also, if, you watch, if you're watching us on Facebook, uh, please make sure... Click the notifications so that you'll actually get the notifications whenever we go live so that you guys can be a part of this conversation as it's happening. Finally, if you want to just listen to us, you can listen to us uh, on our podcast. Uh, you can find out which service, uh, where, which service that you may use by looking uh, right in the description of this video. Just look for anchor.fm forward slash coffee with Craig, and there you'll find uh, Spotify, uh, Google podcast, Apple podcast, uh, you name it, iTunes, we're there. So you'll be able to find us there as well. Also want to encourage you guys, please take a moment, go to fpcgear.com. That's fpcgear.com. All sorts of cool t-shirts, coffee mugs, hoodies, uh, all different ways where you can show your support for the Second Amendment. And actually, be supporting the Second Amendment because every dollar that you spend there goes right back into the fight for our right to keep and bear arms. Support the Second Amendment. Look at doing it. That's fpcgear.com. All right. You guys know that I've talked to you guys a lot about how, uh, how anti-gunners are actually, they realize that they can't actually ban guns, or at least they can't ban all guns. So what they've tried to do is they've tried to nibble around the Second Amendment. They've tried to uh, here and there go after uh, various different things and places like going after ammunition, going after firearms retailers, uh, trying to whittle down the people who are able to own firearms, but also uh, trying to whittle, you know, whittle down and reduce where we can actually go and exercise our right and actually practice and actually train and become proficient with our firearms. Well, one, unfortunately, one such uh, attempt is taking place in San Diego County, California. Uh, and with us to talk a little bit about what is going on, uh, what is going on there in San Diego is a good friend of the Firearms Policy Coalition, Mr. Mike Schwartz of San Diego Gun Owners. Mike, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Craig. Appreciate it. Well, it, was al it is always a pleasure whenever I get a chance to hang out with you, sir, even if it's online. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what's going on down there in San Diego. So there are, you know, the County Board of Supervisors, which is, for those who uh, aren't familiar, a County Board of Supervisors is like a city council, but for the entire county. Um, one in particular, one of the County Board members here in San Diego has been trying to shut down shooting on public lands for years. Um, I, I, my, I believe it has to do with some very tiny group of people uh, who are uh, just the squeaky wheel and they keep bothering her about it. They don't want people shooting on public lands. They don't want people off-roading on public lands. They're kind of these kind of these radical environmentalists. So they've been working on her to try to stop shooting on public lands. Now she's county level and the public lands that we're talking about are federal. So she's been, you know, try, getting a hold of the BLM and uh, Bureau of Land Management and trying to uh, get them to stop shooting. And finally what happened was uh, today, actually this morning, uh, she put a um, uh, resolution or more than a resolution, it's actually a a regulation in front of the entire board to stop to to actually tell the BLM um, to you know uh, stop shooting on, on BLM land, and the reason she's able to do that, even though they're federal and and uh, she's county, is that back in 1990 they actually entered into a, an agreement, a memorandum that basically says, in a nutshell, that the BLM, the federal land will pretty much do what they're directed to do by the county. So this county supervisor, her name's Diane Jacob, and she, by the way, goes around to all the meetings and all the you know community talks and everything, talks about how pro-Second Amendment she is. 
has done absolutely nothing to support the Second Amendment, has done absolutely nothing to support local issues, like when they banned the gun show here recently or when we were working hard to get CCWs, get absolutely no interest in doing anything like that. She's all talk, um, unfortunately. Um, but when it came to trying to ban public lands, well, boom, she automatically gets a regulation and authored and in place. And uh, unfortunately, today it passed. Uh, it passed two to three. Now, yeah. one of the things that was interesting that I, that I found in this was, you know, one of the members even asked, well, you know, have we done anything to try and, and mitigate some of the concerns? Like, for example, you know, maybe if people, are, if people have an issue with, you know, rounds going various different places, have we done anything to try and, and, and it maybe redirect the direction that, that these ranges are? Uh, they also brought up the idea of, well, where are these other places that, where people can go and shoot? And, and sure enough, I mean, the, fact, the very fact that city staff couldn't tell you, and then they turned around and still voted and approved it, I, not city staff, county staff, couldn't, couldn't even tell them where, where's the, where are the places where they can go shoot. I, I, just, thought, I just thought the whole thing was, it looked like a, a serious dog and pony show. It was so sloppily done. Uh, there, they, they, it was passed on for, for two different reasons, uh, two different excuses, I should say. One was that they said that there were houses that were being shot at. Um, and the other reason is that they were, uh, they said the shooting in these public lands are uh, was a fire risk. So they didn't have really have any evidence or proof of any of this. Um, they were talking about how uh, some of the houses that were miles and miles away, um, if there is recreational shooting going on. They have to hunker down in place and, and uh, you know, dodge bullets, which is absolutely ludicrous. Um, and and to, to support that claim, they weren't able to produce a police report. They weren't able to produce any kind of evidence that any of that is, is going on. In fact, the closest houses to the areas where where the shooting is allowed, is they're miles away. One of them, you'd have to shoot over a mountain to get a bullet to a house. Um, it's absolutely ridiculous. And they did say that there were over 300 uh, phone calls in that area to the local sheriff's department. Um, and then come to find out that 70% uh, of those phone calls were from two different people. <laughs> it, it was absolutely, it was the most, it was the sloppiest government I've ever seen at one point it took them a good five or 10 minutes to figure out on the map exactly where they were banning shooting. Diane Jacob, the one that proposed this mess. Had no idea. She had no idea. She couldn't even point out on a map where exactly. Uh, Ab Ab she had absolutely no idea. And the, you know, the other thing was there was the, a gentleman who gave testimony that talked about the various different rounds that could actually uh, spark a fire. And the very fact that none of those are rounds that would have been or could have been used. None of those firearms are firearms that are firearms that would have been used. Um, you, you, you also pointed out, you know, the, the issue relating to the, relating to the distance. But even with all of that, there, the, the thing that really got me was there was absolutely no attempt to, the only attempt to address the issue was to ban shooters. And then the funny part was she kept saying, well, this won't this won't ban all shooting, just target shooting, as if as if hunting and target shooting are the same thing. So I can be out there hunting if I, I target shooting if I just say I'm hunting. I, I mean, what is she? What I didn't get I didn't get what her point was, except she reminds me of a lot of the a lot of the folks. And unfortunately, for those of you out there who enjoy hunting, I'm not and, and are listening to the show. I'm not necessarily talking about you. But one of the biggest challenges we have in the gun rights community, in the Second Amendment advocacy community, is we have a lot of hunters out there who really don't care about the Second Amendment. They just all they care about is whether or not they can hunt. And what they don't realize is is that as they come after our rights, what, eventually what they're going to do is they're going to get they're going to just get rid of firearms. Period. But you know, though, anyway. But that but that's what it sounded like to me. Well, she definitely lied her way to victory. Um, she, she was not truthful about a number of things. But what she was trying to do was paint herself as you know, Annie Oakley, you know, some kind of pro-Second Amendment politician. 
She's been in office for almost 30 years. She represents the East County uh, of San Diego County, the East part of San Diego County, where firearm, you know, shooting sports is very, very popular. So she was, you know, hoping to cover her uh, in that way. But it was really horribly done and just sloppily put together. And, uh, you know, we've, you know, she tried to tell me, I, I met with her in person and we talked about this. Um, about a year ago, uh, there was a fire in one of the areas. Now, keep in mind that this is, you know, there's like a million, literally a million acres in, in San Diego County of, of BLM land. And she was pointing that out. You know, hey, there's all this, this acreage, hundreds of thousands of acreage. We're just trying to shut down a couple spots. Well, what, you know, what's misleading about that is that uh, there's really only about four or five areas where you can actually shoot you can actually get to i mean you can't you know some of the areas in blm land are you know deep canyons and high mountains we can't get up on top of the mountain and, and you know it's not a shooting area so there are really only about four or five six places uh that you can actually shoot and they're shutting down about 50 percent so half the places you can actually go shoot are going to be shut down but about a year ago there was a fire there yeah but it wasn't in one of the shooting areas it was just outside of the shooting area still on blm land and it was in an area where the grass was had grown, uh, you know, uh, and, and died. So it's a lot of dry grass. And a guy named Mike Johnson, who runs an organization here called SD Must, and all, their whole purpose and all they do is go out and clean public lands. A great organization. They work very, very hard. They've been doing it for 15 years. They actually wrote to the BLM and said, "Hey, we we noticed that this area is a fire hazard." We want to go help. We want to clean this all up for free. All we need is authorization, and we'll take care of this fire hazard. Well, never got back to them, and then the fire happened. And without even completing an investigation, Diane Jacob immediately blamed it on shooters, and immediately you know called for the uh, shooting to end in that area. And when I sat down and talked with her, I said, "Hey, look, here's an organization, a bunch of people, a bunch of volunteers that could have solved this problem. Why don't we pursue?" helping them out, giving them resources and authority and whatever they need to be successful. Well, she didn't pursue that at all, which tells me it has absolutely nothing to do with finding alternatives or working with gun owners or with fire safety. All it has to do with is banning shooting. Well, the, the, the other, other interesting thing that you pointed out was – that, that was, was an area, area that was, was too close, close to, to, to a, a highway. highway. They, 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 they weren't, weren't really, really supposed to even be shooting, be shooting there. there. Yeah, it was the area where, where they where the fire started, and there's no, I can't find anything conclusive that uh, that says that it was the shooting that caused the fire. There were some people there; they were shooting. There was a fire. That those are all facts. But mm -hmm. it was really put together. I don't know if they dropped a cigarette or if they, on the drive out there, uh, you know, their 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 car, uh, you know, catalytic converter. You know, set fire. There's a lot of ways that they could have set fire, but they were shooting way too close to the road, illegally close to the road. So a new uh, restriction would not have stopped that fire. This restriction they voted for this morning would not have stopped that fire. They they were still breaking the law. They were doing, doing something. Well, well he, but here was the other thing. thing. Now they, they pled, pled guilty, guilty to starting the, the fire. fire. Why, Why did they, they need to plead, plead guilty to something if they, if they weren't, weren't already, already doing, doing something, something illegal? illegal. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. What, what did they plead? What did they plead guilty? So, in other words, having a law that for, for, that forbid it, some, forbid someone from doing something didn't keep them from doing it, did it? And so now we're just gonna now we're just so in other words, criminal breaks the law. So now you just take it away from everybody. Yeah, and and they and she latched onto that. Not you know that fire. It's it's it didn't the fire didn't make her think. Okay, well, gee, we need to do something. She was mm -hmm. in the process of trying to ban shooting. She latched onto that fire um, in order to help make her case. Mm -hmm. it, it really, as you saw, um, most of her case really didn't stand up to scrutiny. And I was really hoping that we could get one more person on that board to see through um, her ridiculous mm -hmm. the case that she was making and, and vote our way. But that, that didn't happen, unfortunately. So, so what, what, uh, what are the next steps for, Cal for, uh, for uh, San Diego, San Diego, San Diego County, County gun owners? So I can't, I can't get into the details, but we're working. So this is BLM land. It's federal land. Right. We're actually working with uh, 
the federal government. It's their land. Uh, I can't really talk about the details. I want to wait until it actually happens. But this is not, the ban's not going to even take place. The ban's not going to happen. Uh, Today they voted to uh, draw up a regulation that would result in a ban, and they gave them a 120-day timeline. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, that's not going to happen, and it really looks like we're we're going to end up better off than we started. Um, they're not going to ban. There will be no ban on federal property, and uh, as far as shooting goes, and it looks like we're going to be able to work on opening up new areas on mm-hmm. federal land well, for, for people to enjoy shooting. So this vote was bad. You never want a vote to go against you, but it's not going to result in a ban. It's not mm-hmm. going to happen. So, so let me ask you this: What, what does uh, uh, Anything, anything next for uh, San Diego gun owners and uh, Ms. Jacobs? Well, she's actually termed out. Oh. So she has two more years. Um, we we endorsed her last time around. Um, and ended up, she had an opponent, that, and we liked the opponent a lot, but he ended up not filing the paperwork and, and didn't actually oh. go. Right? So there are at least two people that are going to run, at least two. Of course, this is two years away. Mm-hmm. Um, that are going to run and uh, after she's turned out and uh, that's good news both well, at least two people who are really good on second amendment issues so i think we're gonna you know two years from now we're gonna have uh better shooting areas on public land and we're gonna have a better person on the county board uh, so we don't have to worry about these ridiculous regulations and we don't have to worry about showing up and uh you know opposing stupid votes well, well you know speaking, speaking, speaking of that, that and that always just that always, always reminds me i always say it's a lot easier it's a lot easier to go before liberty-minded people and ask them to make uh, decisions that defend liberty than it is to go before tyrants and ask them to make decisions uh, that, that would support liberty. So with that, uh, take a few minutes and explain to our, our, our viewers exactly you know, who San Diego County gun owners are and what you do. Absolutely. So we're a, uh, we're a political organization, and we focus only on Second Amendment issues and only on the local level here in San Diego. So there's 18 city councils, there's a county board, there's a sheriff, there are school boards. Um, there's three and a half million people in San Diego. If we were our, our own state, we'd be the 19th biggest state. We're the permanent second amendment local infrastructure that makes sure that we get the right people elected on these local boards and councils. Um, for And the strategy being that number one, there's a lot of things that happen locally, like banning shooting and CCW issues, that sort of thing, um, that need to get solved locally. Uh, but number two, you know, th- these local boards and councils, that's where politicians start their career. So once they get to Sacramento, where you guys have to, you know, uh, work with them, we want to make sure that we're sending the best people up to Sacramento. Um, and, and by doing that, we're filling, or, or to, in order to do that, we're filling the bench to make sure that people who run for Sacramento and Washington your pro second amendment well there you go how do people get a how do people uh, get a hold of you or find out uh, what's, what's going, going on with san diego, san diego county, county gun owners sure we have a lot of events we engage with media all the time uh we do a lot of different uh, things to bring the second amendment community together in san diego the best way to follow us is go to our website san diego county gunowners.com san diego county gunowners.com Sign up for our newsletter, come to our monthly meetings, come to one of our many events, and uh, become a member. Membership's easy. It's only 10 bucks a month, and uh, we'd love to have you. Excellent, sir. Excellent. Excellent. Well, we, we very, very much appreciate you. We appreciate the work that you do. Uh, you know, we're, we're all fighting this battle on various different fronts, and we all know it ain't easy. So. I appreciate, uh, once again, the work that you do, uh, the fact that you're there on the ground and you're helping to make sure that good people are being sent uh, to Sacramento and to Washington, D.C. from there in the San Diego area. That's how it gets started. Well, thank you, Firearms Policy Coalition. You guys have been extremely supportive of us from the very beginning, and I can't thank you enough. You guys are a great organization. You and Brandon do wonderful work, and I, I just thank you. It's just not enough. I, I really appreciate it. Well, once again, we appreciate you. So, everybody... Michael Schwartz, Schwartz, San Diego Diego County County Gun Gun Owners. All right, folks. Well, that's going to be it for today's Coffee with Craig. We very much appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, Please remember to like and share these videos. Tell your friends about the Firearms Policy Coalition. We are the home in the fight for civil rights. Got to use them or you're going to lose them. You guys take care.
If you like our videos, follow, subscribe, like, and share.